Hey everybody, welcome to American History with Mr. Finn. We are continuing with a little bit more of the West. So if you remember, we're dealing with the North and the South on the East Coast, which are changing with Industrial Revolution and agriculture being expanded in the South. Um, and we were looking a little bit at the West. We talked about Lewis and Clark and uh, opening up you know, the entire inside of our country for settlement and people moving west, but uh, there was Native Americans that were living there, and there was also, in the west, we're gonna see this, Spanish settlements. Spanish, though, we haven't talked about the Spanish in a long time, probably since the beginning of the year, but the Spanish are still down there in what is modern-day Mexico, and they have um, moved north from modern-day Mexico. And so Spanish settlements are going to start popping up in places like we know them as today. Um, I would say uh, Texas, um, in California, uh, New Mexico, Arizona. Um, a lot of the places in what we call the Southwest, where we are right now, <laughs> we are going to start to see Spanish settlements are starting to move north. Uh, and so we are going to start to see uh, the, the interior of our country today, the United States of America, and the west coast of our country uh, start to have, in the west, uh, what we call many um, players. There are many players. What does that mean? Well, it means there's a lot of different people out there in the west and on the, on the west coast. Uh, Spanish settlements, uh, you had the Native Americans and a number of different tribes. You had the British who are out there. Uh, Russia was in the way northwest. There is a lot of different people who uh, are actors or players in this story of the West. Uh, we, we had France who was out there who, again, we'll talk about the Louisiana Purchase, kind of go back a little bit when we get to it. But, uh, but in the West, we're finding you know, this is where we get the term Wild West. <laughs> it is going to be a wild place. Uh, these settlements are going to pop up, but they're going to be small towns. Uh, we're going to start to see people coming in um, and having conflict with one another. Uh, there is going to be these towns that are going to have their own laws and rules and deputies and sheriffs and all the stuff you see in old westerns. Uh, we're going to start to see that as well. So right now, early on, we're going to see these Spanish settlements in the West and the Native Americans. Something that does happen um, for Spanish purposes, we might as well get to it now, is in 1821, Mexico uh, gets its... Mexico is independent in 1821, meaning the people that were living there got their independence from Spain, just kind of like how people in North America, uh, in the United States, got their freedom from England. And so the, the people who were living in modern-day Mexico in 1821 become Mexico, or they become Mexican because they're living now in Mexico. That is the name of this new country in 1821, which is right about the time that we are talking about right now. So it's, it fits in here. So we could actually say... We can get rid of Spanish settlements, and we can just say they're Mexican settlements at this point because now Mexico is a country. So now, if you're following me, we have the United States of America, which is primarily from the Mississippi to the east in our country. Uh, we have bought the Louisiana Purchase. Again, we'll get to that, which is just a land purchase for the United States, which gives the United States most of this inside of our country. States like... Kansas and Oklahoma and Louisiana and going up towards what we would say North Dakota, South Dakota, things like that. But we also have another country, Mexico, and then in between <laughs> Mexico down here in the south and moving north and the United States over on the east, you are going to have this whole interior, you know, from California to the Mississippi where you have Native Americans, uh, you might have uh, Mexicans, you might have uh, United States citizens, you might have uh, traders and independent people, you would have a whole group of people kind of living and coexisting here and unfortunately that always leads to one group is going to want to uh, have dominance in that area and take over 
and be the one in charge. Uh, and what we're going to see is primarily the United States of America is going to be that country who pushes west and takes that land for themselves. One thing I will say uh, about Mexico in 1821 is we are going to get to something called, um, well, I already have Texas, but Texas is going to be an interesting thing. Mexico is going to gain its independence, but it, you know, when you get your independence, you're kind of, you're, 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 you're <laughs> for lack of a better term, you're kind of messed up. You don't have a strong government, you don't, your military's not set, you're, you're kind of figuring out your country just like what we talked about in our class about the United States of America. Uh, one thing that they think is a good idea is, hey, we need to get some more people because more people, let me do this, people equal money. You know why? Because people pay taxes. So if more people come to live in Mexico, that just means there's more money for us because we can tax them and that'll be great. Plus, at the same time, uh, Texas being in the West works perfectly for Mexico at the time because people in the United States are wanting to move what direction? <laughs> West. They want more land. They want to expand. Uh, large plantations are taking up more land, so people have to move further west. And Mexico says, hey, this is perfect. We will have these uh, people coming from the United States. So they can move into this area of Texas that, that isn't, doesn't have a ton of people. And then we can get more money for taxes. And so what we're going to look at next time, and this is it's a bigger deal than I'm really making it out to be, because Texas is going to be uh, what we would call a flashpoint, or like, you know, we'll just call it this. It's a big event, and I'll get into it, but it's a big event because uh, there's going to, the questions start to arise, you know, is slavery legal there, is it not legal? Uh, Mexico is going to say, hey, wait a second, we said pe some people could come in, but now if I go to Texas, it's all people that came from the United States of America, like, are we going to lose this land for our country? So there's going to be, this is a big event that's going to happen, that's going to kind of move us closer towards our civil war when we get to it. But I wanted to at least talk a little bit about what's going on in the West, the number of people who are out there, the different groups of people, what it's like. Uh, and the West is going to be a big thing that is going to be a center point to finish the final creation of our United States of America as far as our, solidifying our borders on the southern side and the northern side and going to the uh, Pacific Ocean. So we will get into Texas next time. And really once we get done with Texas, I think we, I think we go back east and we get right to, you know, the upcoming Civil War, but as promised, one, two, three, four, we have our quiz today. Today is quiz day. So uh, on that note, without further ado, let's see what questions we, we get. All right. Oh man, you know what? I think I brought this up, but I don't know for sure. Be and because I don't know for sure, I'm not going to ask it. The word was temperance movement, and it was started where we were looking at it, but, you know, we'll forget it. Just in case, but I do know this one. Uh, number one, who is credited with bringing the Industrial Revolution to America? It's a guy's name who was credited with bringing the Industrial Revolution to America. Chapter review. Uh, random page. All right, here we go. Uh, I know I brought this one up. Here we go. Number two is when a president gets elected, this is the term that means the heads of various departments. So if you remember back, uh, we said what the Treasury Secretary, today we have the uh, Secretary of Education, we have you know all of these different political positions. Uh, the president puts people at the heads of, this, of these various departments. That is his what, number two. Should be able to find that one. I know we talked about that one. And another side page. Ooh, I like this one, but I don't know if we had this on the last quiz or not, but either way, we have it here. Number three. Number three is what event? What event? caused most Americans 
to question the Articles of Confederation. There was an event that happened which convinced most Americans, hmm, I don't know if the Articles of Confederation are really strong enough to govern our country. There was an event that happened that convinced most Americans that it was time to change the Articles of Confederation. What was that event? Chapter review again, look at us. Going way back. I don't want to go that far back. Let's go to here. This is still relatively close, but uh, number four. Who, or what was the name? <laughs> I guess you could say who. What was the name of the King of England during the American Revolution? In the American Revolution, who was the King of England? That is number four. That should be on there very simple. Most of you should remember that one, I would think. Uh, if not, you can definitely find it for number four. Anyway. This is what I'm grading today. Make sure you get this to me today for attendance and participation purposes. You guys have been doing a fantastic job of getting back to me. So I will look forward to seeing this and I will look forward to grading your quizzes and I will see you next class.